And the further we get away from this story, I suspect that is not going to be an issue that's going to be driving any voters in 2022, or very few voters. This is a story that will fade from the headlines, and eventually, maybe it not be right away, eventually Americans will even give him credit. Welcome to this week's Wacky Moments of Leftist Extremism. This week is not so much wacky as it is sad. The situation Joe Biden has managed to create in Afghanistan is very sad. What's even sadder is the members of the leftist media who refuse to really deal with it and instead are wishing hard that it would all go away and not impact Democrats. And the further we get away from this story, I suspect that is not going to be an issue that's going to be driving any voters in 2022, or very few voters. This is a story that will fade from the headlines, and eventually, maybe it not be right away, eventually Americans will even give him credit. Joy Reid is happy to start giving Biden credit, trying to reshape Biden's foreign policy disaster as a thorough job. The burden sharing isn't exactly equal. Um, there are all of these NATO countries that are essentially saying it's all up to you, uh, the United States. And it sounds to me like the military are doing quite a thorough job. I mean, they've gotten a lot of people out. You wouldn't know it from sometimes listening to the coverage, but they've gotten a lot of people out. Oh, yeah. Chuckle it out, Joy. I mean, I, I don't know that there's anything that uh, that Biden could do other than promise to leave troops in there for another 20 years in order to satisfy some folks. Well, Biden certainly has done enough to please Matthew Dow during his appearance on CNN. And as of today, he's done an extremely good job in this situation. Were- the president, for what he was dealt and what he's done over the course of the last week, should be congratulated on the way this was done. Now, there's many things left to handle of the course of this situation. I think the president's done unbelievable yeoman's work. At least he got the unbelievable part of Biden's efforts correct. The leftist media will do anything to ease the pressure off of Biden, even, even attempting to humanize an Islamic terrorist group currently slaughtering people in Afghanistan. Here's a Newsweek article. Seeking world recognition, Taliban vows to help fight terror and climate change. The leftists certainly found the silver lining here, didn't they? As long as the Taliban help fights climate change, perhaps the media will work with them on explosives that emit less CO2 when killing people. And it wasn't just Biden the media had to protect this week. It was Democratic California Governor Gavin Newsom. He's facing a recall election, and CNN is just so shocked to find out that some Democrats no longer support him. You'd think rejecting the recall of Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom would be a no-brainer for these three Los Angeles voters. But it's not. You know, I have to say I'm really leaning very heavily towards the recall. To recalling the governor. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm disappointed in the Democratic Party in general. Uh-oh, that means the unbiased media needs to take action. MSNBC invited an investigative journalist, that's what they actually call her, they invited her on to explain why leading GOP candidate Larry Elder is bad and discuss the need to support Newsom at all costs. I do want to ask you, because the vice president is headed to California, what is it that you think Californians need to hear from her? I mean, Californians need to hear that they need to show up. At, they need to, regardless of, of how they feel about Governor Newsom, there is a lot of valid discontent with, you know, some of the things that he did during the pandemic, but he has done, you know, the best that he can. And, and, and we will have an opportunity to vote him out if we want to in the next real democratic election. What needs to happen now is that Latinos turn out, uh, that Democrats turn out and vote no on this recall election because the alternative would be disastrous, not only for California, um, but it would set a nightmarish precedent that would reverberate across the United States. And it would be especially devastating for black and Latino people um, you know, across across the country. Larry Elder says he plans to use the bully pulpit. He, he plans to use um, dehumanizing terms like illegal aliens. He doesn't believe in humanizing terms like undocumented. And, and the experts I speak to say this will lead to a rise in hate crime. What? Elder calling illegal aliens illegal aliens would lead to rises in hate crime? I mean, really? How does this investigative journalist know this? Is she really a fortune teller? Have it this again, mystical Madam Guerrero. He, he plans to use um, dehumanizing terms like illegal aliens. He doesn't believe in humanizing terms like undocumented. And, and the experts I speak to say this will lead to a rise in hate crimes, um, which we've, we're already seeing a rise in hate crimes. And this would just be devastating for, for communities of color in, in, a, in a time where, where we really just can't t- have any more of this. I think what the leftist media really just can't have any more of is democratic losses. There's a recall election looming in California. 
And here's why it matters if you live outside the Golden State. First, because it's another Republican end run around majoritarian democracy. Second, because control of the U.S. Senate could hang in the balance. Oh, well, the media wouldn't want to see a shift in Senate power, and that's where their concern actually lies. Such objective journalists. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Shiner from RCTV, asking you to head over to the MRC store, pick up some great conservative gear there. Also, head over to MRCTV.org for the latest blogs, video, and information. Be sure to like and subscribe on the social media platform of your choice. And we'll be back next week with more leftist media madness.